Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to do an inner join using Power Query Merge Function. So what an inner join does is it gives you the matches between two tables. So let's say, for example, we have this table. It will give us the matches based on the field that we identify for both those tables. The scenario that we probably would want to use this in is this. Let's say we are the manager of project managers, and we want to see which people in our team have overall have ownership in the overall portfolio of projects. So maybe this table has a list of folks that are on our team, their employee IDs, and we get a list of the portfolio of projects from an overall portfolio manager. And these are the project IDs, and we just want the project names, the client IDs, and the start dates of the people only that own projects within our team. And our table will probably have those four records because we have three folks that match this area, but there are four projects. Uh, one person owns two projects, and we'll get this table here. And this is going to be an inner join in Power Query. So let's see how we can do this. I have my data here. We've got my list of people and my list of projects and the project ID start dates. We're going to turn this into a table. Let's see if I go into data, go to from table and range. Excel is smart enough to figure out that this range of data needs to be put in a table. So it's going to create a table first. The first row has headers. So that checkbox is there and checked for us. Click OK. Power Query Editor come up. It has identified uh, this table. After the table is created, you can see that that range of data now this it's turned blue. Um, there's going to when I click back into Excel, you'll see that it's a table. But here we have the Power Query editor up. It has queried that table. Going to put it into Power Query. I'm just going to click close and load, and this is going to load as a connection only. By default, I have it set as a connection only. Uh, in most default instances of Excel, it's going to default to table, and it's going to put it into new worksheet. I just have it set up as a connection, which is ideal here. Click OK. It's going to create that connection. I want to do the same thing for this range of data. So click anywhere in that cell or cell range or table range and click data. Click from table and range. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to want to create a table. My first record or first row are headers. So that's checked. My tables has headers. Click OK. And it's going to go through the same thing of putting that table or that range of data into Power Query. Click Close and Load. It's going to create a connection only because that's what I have by default. And what I want to do now, let's change this into a different color so you see the differences. Or maybe I'll do green like I had before. I'll do green, 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 right there. And if I click on here, you notice that the Table Tools uh, contextual menu comes on. That indicates to you that this is a table, not just some range of data. Same here, if I click outside, you'll see it disappear. Click within the table, it's on. Now, I'm going to pick one of these tables for my inner join. It doesn't really matter which one. And I'm going to pick table four first. So I'll select table four, right click, go to reference, and I'll use this as the reference table. And I will merge queries. So I'll merge queries of table four and five. Click on merge queries. It's going to merge the first one. I look at employee ID. And then for table five, I'm also going to look at employee ID. And I want to do an inner join. And interestingly enough, you'll look here. Previously, we had four matches. But you look here, you go, oh, it's only matched three out of the five rows. Well, it's matched three of the five rows here. But one show is going to show up twice. And this may be misleading at first, even though we're doing an inner join. Uh, you may think, oh, why is it only matching these three? And I'll show you why that happens. Click OK. And even here, it looks misleading. You know that there should be four rows. But if we click on our, our little space here in the table, you'll see there's going to be two instances. Two, when you really think about it, two tables within this cell representing their, that particular um, merge. Of course, the other ones, there's only going to be one record for each. When I click on the double-headed sided double -headed arrow here, it's going to explode it out. Explode it out and I have the options to choose which of the columns that we want to explode out. I don't need employee ID anymore, but I do need the other, I will want the other headers. 
I'll deselect, uncheck that because I don't want the original column name as a prefix. Click OK, and now we have our four records, right? So employee ID 3344 is going to show up twice for project one and for project seven here. And that's what the inner join does. It's going to bring back the matches of both tables, even though it didn't look like it when it was going through that intermediate step. Click close and load. I'm going to load this to a, maybe I'll load it to the same worksheet here. Go to table, existing worksheet. Let's put it here in cell, I don't know, A16. Click OK. And now we have our table. And this is going to be the table. Close this pane here. This is going to be the table that has the match of both of these tables here, table four and table five. It's going to have the match based on our employee IDs. So that's what we call an inner join. And in this particular scenario, that's what we need. We want to have the total matches of the employee IDs between both of these tables because we want to see which of our employees have the projects only within this whole portfolio of projects. So that's an example of an inner join. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.